Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to bring you your Nichols Worth and today we're going to feature my pastor's 1964 Thompson Chain Reference Bible. Now this thing has been put through the paces, it was preached from for 40 plus years and it's 58 years old. So we're going to take a look at how an old Bible held up, how was it constructed, and are modern day premium Bibles any better? So let's check it out. First of all, we have a very nice Morocco leather cover with some tool lines right here. Nice grain, and it has a decent little yap. Now you can see this is thin. This isn't thick and plush like some of your premium leathers today. I did a ribbon replacement, so the ribbon that was on it was falling apart, so I just went ahead and put three brand new vatten ribbons in it. So now let's take a look at how the cover wore. First of all, you'll see it has some discolorations there just from like hand oils and different things getting spilled on it and just use on a regular basis. Has a nice little grain. You'll also see that the gold foil stamping has kind of rubbed off and it's more of just kind of a regular gold look now. I'm going to assume, because that's how older Bibles wore, once you got the gold foil off it would just reveal like a regular like antique looking gold under it. But it has stayed on there. It hasn't rubbed all the way off, so that's pretty impressive. It has one, two, three, four, five kind of mini raised spine hubs. Nice little tool work on the spine there. And then again on the back, you can see some discoloration. I would say some leather conditioner would probably do wonders on this cover to make it look a little more new and nice. But for 58 years old, that doesn't look too bad. So now let's look at the liner. This is what I'm pretty certain is not an animal skin liner. It's some sort of not paper, not vinyl, but some sort of synthetic that has held up really good over time. You can see it's getting some creases and wrinkles from where it's been used, which is probably why you see these in the yap here. It does have a pretty generous yap, not full, but not bad. You can also see the tool work was carried over into the liner. That's interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen that done before. Pretty nice little corners. I'm sure that was done by hand back in the time because machinery wasn't as prominent in the 60s. Edge lined, check out that edge line construction. Also, you'll notice in the edge lining they glue the end sheet and the fly leaf of the Bible together. That is by design. Got another couple of thick cardstock pages to kind of add some reinforcement. You got your title page and then check out the copyright page. This is a 1964 Kirkbride Thompson Chain Reference Bible. This is the sixth edition. You can see there was an edition in 57, 34, 1929, 17, and 1908. This is the 66th printing of this current edition in the King James, printed in the United States of America from Kirkbride, based in Indianapolis, Indiana. It also gives you kind of a preface and how to use this Bible and how to apply. It does have, of course, the artwork that you're used to in the older TCRs. And then once you get into the text, you can see it's got really nice paper. Now Randy Brand told me that the process in which they made this paper is no longer legal in America because of health concerns. Now it was only the process that caused the health concerns. It was not the paper itself once it was completed. So it's perfectly safe to use, but it's not as safe to make. So once we get into the layout of this Bible, you can see double column. Looks to be about an eight point font. It's got your references on your inner and outer margins, and it also has your chain system there from where you can carry on a topic. You can also see there, this is overcast stitch. So check that out. Really well built, really well constructed, good paper. You can see the ghosting is pretty minimal in this. I don't know what the GSM of this paper is, but it feels really thin. So the opacity of this paper is ridiculous. I've never seen paper this opaque and this thin. This beats the French and opaque paper all to smithereens. This is Indian paper, by the way, just in case you were wondering. So as we dive into it, you can see it's held up really nicely. That sewn binding has really done its job. The overcast stitching has really done its job. This one is marked up, has several notes all throughout it. This one talks about healing being part of the old covenant and the new covenant. Of course, my pastor took copious notes underline, highlighting verses, all sorts of different things that you'll see here. Really beautiful layout. So now let's move into a spot where he used a marker I would not recommend. Okay, this is some sort of full-blown marker, and you can see when you use something like that, it bleeds through badly on the other page. It even bled through onto this page a little bit as well. So don't use marker even on your good Bible paper. Use a good Bible highlighter. Also the ink pen. You can see where he used the ink pen, just a regular ballpoint pen. 
and the paper shows no trauma as a result of using it. Really, really sharp. I love it. I love the fact that this Bible was able to withstand some abuse. Let's take a look at the gilding. Okay, you can see this gilding is beat up. It's almost gone. 58 years, mind you. But you can also see it looks like there was some water damage right there. So let's go to that section and let's take a look at how it held up with the water damage. You can see some browning from the paper, but there's not a lot of waves. It's actually held up pretty good. None of the pages are stuck together. You can see where the water hit, where it kind of smeared the ink and things like that. But for this to take a hit like that, that looks like it took a lot of water damage and still held up pretty good. Other than the browning of the paper, it looks really sharp. So now as you get to the back to some of the references, you have your referencing system. You have some of your different charts and graphs and various tools that the older Thompson chain used to have. You have that old artwork. All of this has been eliminated from the new TCR from Zondervan. It has your archaeological supplement, which is outdated now. And then once you get past all of this, you have a teeny tiny little. Now this look right here, you can see some signs of wear, but look. It is still holding together. That sewn binding is really legit. And let me tell you why that's holding together. Everyone see how that paper's kind of torn there? So that's just from use. And you can see right here, it's starting to kind of fracture a little bit, but still, it's, that's pretty remarkable that it's holding on. And let me show you why. Let's get back to the maps. And you'll see on the back, they also have overcast stitching. Now, a lot of publishers will skip this step and they will only put the overcast stitching on the front. It's very important that you put it on the back so that when over time it starts to wear and starts to break, like we saw in this example, it's still holding together. So when you consider this thing's 58 years old, endured 40 plus years of pulpit ministry, being carried around, thrown around, tossed around, beat up and used, and still in one piece, that is a remarkable testament to the durability of Bibles that were made in the 1950s and 60s. I am glad we've gotten back to overcast stitching and sewn bindings and improved paper and all these things. But one thing this will tell you is if you have a premium Bible and it's edge lines and it's overcast stitch and it has a sewn binding and it has good paper, you're going to be able to use it. Don't be afraid to use your nice Bibles. That's why they're built. They're built so they'll last like this thing right here. Built like a tank, built to last so that you can preach out of them, so you can read them, so you can mark in them, and you can do all the things that you love to do with your Bible that help you memorize and help you study and really just help you have a relationship with the Word of God. That's why they're built. This is a testament to that. Again, 40 plus years of being used in the pulpit, opened and closed every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Sunday night. Pastor Carroll had three services a week where he used his Bible to preach from. So this thing has really, really held up and... I'm just really proud to give this another 40 years. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on this is your next word.